Uh, welcome, everybody. We thank you for your time today in us uh, uh, providing information and insight on how to meet requirements for CMMC. Um, first, like to do some intros, um, and then we can, uh, and then we'll we'll get started. Uh, currently, on the Stealth ISS group side, we have uh, Robert Davies, who is the CEO. Hey, everyone! Yeah. Thanks for joining. We have Dasha Deckworth, one of our presenters, and CISO at Stealth ISS Group. Hi, everyone. And then on Signet side, we have Roy Bar Barnia, Head of Channels. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. And Laura Crossland. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, appreciate it. Um, your time today. Let's turn it over to Dasha to get started. All right, perfect. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right. So welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Dasha, and uh, together with Roy, we're going to present to you um, a little bit about TMMC, but also particular focus on the areas on how to actually meet all these requirements. I mean, there's a lot of them, and we want to give you a particular an overview about security monitoring, incident response, and forensics, and a solution between us and, uh, and our partner, Signet, that might be an option for you to meet those requirements and get ahead of the, of the CMMT requirements. Um, just to let you know, I will try to keep this short. We have a demo, and then afterwards, we're going to have FAQs. We have um, Slido and in the chat here. So if you have any questions, please ask those. We will get, uh, get to those and make sure you get your question answered. All right? So what we're gonna do, quick introduction. What is CMMC? Why do you need to get started and why now? We're gonna show about logging, monitoring, incident response, the key requirements that CMMC has for those. And then we're gonna show you um, the endpoint talk as a service incident response overview, then go into the sign up demo and then the rest is um, all interactive and uh, Q&A. So what is CMMC? Well, most of you, the reason why you're probably here is because you know CMMC is a requirement, it is in place. Uh, so CMMC is a cybersecurity maturity model certification. Mm -hmm. It was put in place by the DOD to make sure that all defense industrial based companies meet certain requirements uh, when it comes to. Uh, maybe I have that. Uh... And see why. Uh, okay. Whoever's talking, can you please go on mute? Thanks. So, if you, um, the goal here really is to get um, defense contractors certified to meet FCI and CUI requirements. It is not a self-certification. So unlike this previously, where you were able to do your own assessments and be able to identify what, how good is my security, unfortunately, the CMMC does not allow for that. There are C3PO companies um, that will be out there to do that for you. And if you want to be, if you want to continue doing business with a uh, with the DOD you will be required to have CMMC certification upon contract award if a CMMC requirement is part of the, the contract. So, so what does that mean? So CMMC, it's basically a long list, really long list of items, security items, policies, procedures, technology, uh, configurations, you name it that you need to comply. It's actually 171 controls across 17 domains. And based on what CMMC or what CMMC level you have to comply with or what contract you go after, it will tell you which CMMC level is required for this. You will have to certify to either level one, two, three, four, or five. Most of, um, most of um, the the defense at the DIB will be required to certify for level three. Certification is for three years, so that's a good thing. You do not have to go through this whole process every single year. 
but it is still a lot. So what I wanted to share is CMMC requirements. So there's 17 different domains. And if you're an A level three, you're actually looking at a total of 130 practices, including configurations, processes, tool, and maturity levels that you have to implement. And uh, if you're not dealing with CY, you will, um, you will only be required to have as a minimum level one, which is still 17 practices that you have to adhere to. So the, the biggest questions that we have received so far as a company that helps doing uh, pre-assessments and gap analysis to help companies to get to the level so that they can eventually certify is, well, what do we, how do we approach this? Where do we start? What do we do? What does that mean? So all these questions that are, that companies like you might be struggling with. So the whole purpose here is we're gonna take a look at a couple of those and really walk you through it on how a service, a tool, process in particular can help you to meet those requirements. So the question is why, what is CMMC different from this? If you're in the, um, if you're doing business with the DOD, you've, uh, you probably have heard of NIST, you probably meet, met the requirements for NIST self-certification by December last year. So it is very similar to NIST. There's a lot of areas that CMMC has the same but there's also 20 areas that are not from this, that are new. And those are some of the requirements um, that need to be met, including incident response and monitoring. Um, the main difference between CMMC and NIST is CMMC has no gray shades. So either you pass or you fail. There is no poem. There is nothing, yeah, we'll do that in six months and eventually, I, I know I have a gap, I'll do it next year. Um, no, it's, you have to have it in place. Therefore, it's really critical that whoever the assessor is that comes in, you have the right evidence, you show the maturity level, you show that you have everything in place and can get your certification. Because if you don't, you will lose your contract or will, you will not get the contract that you're going after. So what's the timeline? So interim ruling for NIST self-certification was December last year. Um, the initial RFPs or pilots are already out there since December, 2020. So the DOD is making sure that the first companies that are bidding on awards are getting into the CMMC certification and it will go stronger and stronger. So the goal is by five years from now, every contract that the DOD pushes out will have some kind of CMMC certification level required. So you, there's no need to panic just yet, but if the DOD comes out with a contract or an RFP that requires you to have one, please make sure you get ahead of the schedule. It, there, is not, there are not a lot of companies out there that are CPAOs that can actually do the certification. The DOD is also still catching up on some of the things that they need to do to get those C3PAOs out. There are provisional assessors like me and I believe at this point 99 others that um, can do and are trained to actually go after or help provide the guidance and the gaps and the assessments or gap analysis for companies like uh, you that want to get into the space. But if you, it is not a checklist. So you will have to plan ahead. If there's a requirement that a contract will be awarded shortly and you do not have your certifications, you need to get started. It is, um, there's just not enough people and companies out there to certify everybody at this point. So what makes it so urgent? Well, one thing is uh, for sure right now, it's all about the biggest difference between CMMC and NIST, which is showing that you have actually a maturity level. It's that you have cyber processes and security and data protection baked into your corporate DNA, into your processes. It's um, unlike NIST, where it's a one-time snapshot, where you check the boxes and say, okay, 
yes, I have a monitoring tool. Yes, I have password uh, changes after every 90 days. I have this and this. That's fine. That's a one-time snapshot. CMMC is not a one-time snapshot. It's not a checkbox exercise. So you have to have your the maturity that is required for a minimum of level three. You have to make sure that it is in place. And no, it's um, it does not have to be a difficult process. Yes, it's a lot of work, but there are companies like us and many others out there that are giving guidance and recommendations on how to make you achieve it. And also the DOD is providing a lot of guidance because they want the, um, the defense contractors to be successful. They don't want them to lose out on any contracts, but it is key that we, that we protect our nation and our DOD infrastructure and the data that we send back and forth and work on. So, where do you start? The biggest thing is of course, change the security culture in your company. If you think that, yeah, getting the checkbox done, getting it all the, out the door is going to make it happen. No, you have to have the maturity fact in your company, in your processes, in your day-to-day -day operations. So make sure you do the training, you make your staff aware, and you really understand that this is not a one-time thing. It's a continuous thing. What is the best process to achieve CMMC certification? If you know that you got all ducks in row and you are pursuing a particular contract that has CMMC or particular RFP that has CMMC requirements in place, feel free to contact the CMMC AB boards and uh, get into the queue to get certified. Now, if you're not, like most of, most of the companies that uh, have approached us in the past, they are not necessarily sure, are they ready? What are they missing? So you can do a gap analysis internal or via third company, third party. Then you can do a remediation process. Then you can get an official assessment readiness review done um, by a company to make sure that you get all the documents, you get everything in place to actually be ready for the certification. Because as I said, certification, it's a pass or fail. There's no poems, there's nothing. So you preferably want to have everything in place before you go after the certification. So where do you need to start? You need to have the evidence in place. You need to have the maturity in place. You need to have the log files. You need to have documentation, the processes, um, all of that to show the auditors that you know what you're doing, that you're protecting CUI as needed. So what you will need for that, uh, preferably an internal IT or compliance staff, or even provisional assessors or third party like us or a registered um, practitioner, CMMC registered practitioner that can come in and guide you through that process. If you don't have your internal IT or compliance staff that can go through those, it's probably your best bet to reach out to APA or an RP to get you to that level. Um, you will need policies and procedures in place, especially if you're going after uh, CMMC level three, you have to have that baked and you have to have it documented and they need to meet CMMC standards. So that's a, that's a key thing. Last but not least, you're gonna need tools and services. So you're gonna need tools such as encryption, SIMs, multi-factor authentication. Um, you're gonna need incident response, log monitoring, threat hunting, patch management services. Um, either you do it in-house or you work with MSPs or companies like us to get you to that level. It's uh, sometimes outsourcing and taking advantage of infrastructure and the tools that other companies have might be best as long as you make sure that they also meet the security requirements that you need to adhere to. The key areas for CMMC what we've seen so far where a lot of companies struggling with is especially smaller ones, it's monitoring of system, log collection, and especially encryption and control of FCI, CUI data at rest and segmentation of that FCI, CUI environment. So what we wanna do here is we want to particularly focus on the areas of logging, monitoring and incident response. 
So the requirements that we have here for CMMC that fall into logging, monitoring, incident response is audit, incident response, risk management, situational awareness, system communication protection, and system information. So you're looking at six different domains within CMMC that are key and have the requirements. Incident response. And by the way, this is in no way, shape or form tied to the domains of CMMC. This is just three different categories that we've put together. So incident response. Uh, you have to have incident response capabilities. So a team that will analyze triage events, be able to respond, respond to any incidents, be able to even establish the reporting and give your vendors or even the DOD information that, oh my God, we got breached or we have an incident. Um, you need to be able to have forensic data gathering. You need to be able to have a manual automated real-time responses to any alerts or threat you may have. For the log and monitoring side, you need to collect review logs. You need to correlate logs. You need to respond and receive to cyber threats. You need to have cyber hunting capabilities. Um, control and monitor mobile code usage. You have to control scripts. Uh, you have to monitor inbound, outbound traffic. Um, a long list of stuff and things that, uh, especially if you don't have your own SOC team or your own dedicated security team in place, you're probably looking at it and saying, oh my God, this is a lot. And then you've got risk and threat management. So you've got to scan for vulnerabilities. Sorry. Back here. You've got to scan for vulnerabilities. You've got to have um, catalog threat profiles. You have to have threat intelligence in place. You have to perform periodic risk assessments for organizational operational purposes, uh, for IT, uh, for any critical assets that you have for your data. So that's a lot you're asking yourself. Well, it, it is, but um, there's one way we want to help you out here is show you one option um, that we bring to the table between us and Signet on how we can help you to get ahead of this and cover all these areas with our tools and services. And pretty much get this off your plate so you can focus on running your business and all the other areas that CMMC has. So we're gonna present you here a full solution report. So 24 seven monitoring, analysis and mitigations, US-based security analyst, incident response team, full forensic services, threat feeds that are being automated as we go, log, correction, uh, log correlation, endpoint network log uh, collection, archiving, vulnerability scanning, risk and security assessment. Basically, what we wanna show you here is a solution that really gets you for incident response and monitoring the discovery, the monitoring, identification, detection, and remediation of what you need to be looking for, what you need to be monitoring. So with this, I'm gonna hand over to Roy and uh, give him the floor. Thank you so much, Dasha. And I'm gonna share my screen now. So uh, thank you everyone for joining. My name is Roy from Signet. Uh, and stop, starting at the uh, main point that Dasha stopped now, uh, Signet is an XDR. And I'll try to connect all the dots together how an XDR is uh, providing a lot of uh, capabilities to cover some of the subjects that is part of CMMC as having an XDR. But usually before I start with that, uh, I prefer just giving a slide or two uh, to, ed to just update everyone about XDR. It's a new term in the industry. So uh, let's cover a little bit the background of how the evaluation of the endpoint space started. I believe most of you know it even better than me. We started years ago with the AV that was uh, used as a database or signature-based protection to an endpoint solution. It very fast moved to a next generation AV, a little bit more advanced, uh, basically having much more uh, updates weekly, adding more database to the signatures that was already defined by uh, uh, the AV or next gen AV. And very fast since uh, the security landscape adapted and the uh, attackers and attack methods became more sophisticated, came the endpoint protection space. 
but much more holistic approach to it. Uh, basically the ability to protect any internal cable device on the network, much more advanced than the next gen AV. After that, of course, all of you know that next gen endpoint protection uh, addresses much more advanced capabilities of detection, mainly including behavior analysis, AI, machine learning, and much more. Due to the fact that the attacks and methods and mainly malware become much more uh, challenging to solutions such as next gen AV and EPP. And today, the industry, as we develop, it's always a cat and mouse chase between the bad guys uh, and security layers needed to protect them. Is the EDR the most common uh, endpoint solution today to cover the network? Basically, EDR, I believe you all know, has the detection capabilities, but attaching to that, uh, a playbook or remediation flow, a basic one that there are a couple of actions performed by the endpoint solution um, to uh, prevent and remediate type of threats and attack. And today the XDR comes in place. And usually we need to ask ourselves, is your current solution today providing a sufficient uh, uh, visibility and protection? Usually when we're covering EDRs today, we see that they have a great next-gen AV and a great EDR. Mainly EDRs today are focused on covering the file pillar and the host pillar. XDR and our offering today on Signet contains much more. It's an holistic approach. It's a consolidated platform. We see that today next-gen AV and EDR doesn't cut it to address those fast operating malware and ransomware. We need an action AV, we need an EDR, we need network detection to protect against all those uh, threats such as lateral movement, DNS tunneling, reconnaissance, sports scanning, and many other methods attacker are using. We need to understand behavior, both of the user and see out of behavior uh, activities and of an entity in the network. We'll touch base deeper on that as we move forward. And today, the most advanced technology designed for ransomware is deception, honeypots and many other deception capabilities, basically putting traps for the attackers. Uh, um, and of course, ransomware, mainly they're seeking on the network assets that are important for them to put their hands on and encrypt. Another differentiator or question we need to ask ourselves if we have an EDR today, is the auto playbooks that they provide fully eliminates threats and mainly are covering the advanced threat that we're facing today. EDRs usually are focused on the file and host as mentioned before. They have basic remediation actions. Some have more advanced, some a little bit less, but they're mainly focused on actions such as the leading quarantine and killing process, isolating running commands and scripts. XDR today needs, first of all, to cover four fundamental pillars on the network, the host, the user, the, net, uh, the environment and the network as well. And we need much more capabilities as part of the flow. <clears throat> Usually I like to focus on a very known ransomware attack and just cover a little bit of advanced flows that is needed today for ransomware. For example, to kill a process, disable a user, uh, isolate a host, disable input, spark RDP and disable Active Directory users. And in some cases, many organizations needs even the ability to tailor-made and be much more flexible or adjust the playbook according to their needs, not only according to the built-in automation or uh, playbooks that a solution or a vendor provides them. In addition to that, looking today at EDR solutions, we need to ask ourselves, do they provide an automated investigation and response and actions? Usually EDRs today are alert-based and filed and host, as mentioned before. Today, we need to understand in our approach is that Security starts with visibility. We need to understand exactly cross the network correlation or event. We need to see the steps. We need to have the ability even that the automation will be a fast remediation action. So looking at all incident artifacts, having the ability to investigate and of course covering end-to-end -end our environment, user files, host and network, not only the files and host remediation capabilities. Today, even our approach as a security vendor, we have an approach that with all due respect to any technology, even ours that we believe are very good. Human intervention today is a must, not only uh, a building technology or capabilities of a vendor, by steam of expertise. EDRs usually do not have that uh, included. It's an additional uh, fee or sometimes with other services. One of the biggest values with this partnership 
with the Stas ISS group, is their SOC and our MDR capabilities working together, teams of expertise that is really covering 24 seven, providing solution, uh, services such as detection, investigation, response, IR, uh, research, uh, and of course, experts and advice, mainly being there for the client 24 seven, guiding, assisting on the line with you until resolving together each event. One of the biggest values of this partnership. And last and not least, since ransomware is one of the main topics today that we're addressing, and we're seeing ransomware is not only hitting the high enterprise accounts, even the small, the medium and uh, uh, small organizations. Today, EDRs do not provide it. It requires a third party provider, additional fee, installation cost, integration, operation management, and many more. And another challenge, those solutions natively do not sync or correlate to each other. Signet today provides honeypots and deception capabilities fully automated with the ability even to add as many more various types of uh, decoys for a file, for user, for a network, that really putting a lot of traps there and the ability basically to lock an attacker or temp of attack on a honeypot technology. Extremely valuable in design ransomwares and advanced malwares. So exactly what is basically Signet's XDR autonomous breach protection offering. You can see that first of all on blue, the prevention detection capabilities contains the next gen AV, the EDR, user and entity behavior analysis, network traffic analytics and deception. The technology that we combine here and the uniqueness from all other competition in the market, usually other vendors have the ability to have a first layer of detection and after that the EDR will detect the user behavior analysis or entity and go on and go forth. When we're inspecting any type of events, all those engines in real time sync, correlate, and talk to each other, providing a less false positive uh, amount, better detection capabilities, and of course, the most important, full correlation across the network to define exactly what is going on and what is that activity. <coughs> Automation. Today, attacks are operating very fast. We need to be faster than that. We need fully automation capabilities on remediation. Clients can easily go fully automated with us. Of course, the ability to uh, remediate manually as well or semi-pilot. And as mentioned before, the ability to customize and create playbooks. Every client is different from the other and has different business needs. Sometimes they need to adjust the playbooks according to their needs and how they operate. And of course, last but not least, we touched base about the autonomous responders, the incident engine providing us full visibility and a correlation across the network. This is something that I'll cover in the uh, demo, one of the uniqueness that Signet is bringing to the market. Last and not least, the 24 seven MDR combined with the services that Stealth brings is really a full coverage end-to-end -end with uh, SOC and SOAR capabilities. Team of expertise uh, will be there to assist in whitelisting, fine tuning, alert monitoring, and even IR or attack reports if needed. And of course, in addition to that, our solution has built in auto remediation, uh, built in uh, reports that you can define and send automatically from the system. But mainly, we're referring here to uh, required reports by teams of expertise, both from Signet and uh, Sales Access Group. Today, we're seeing that most solutions do not cover even old versions of OSs and Signet took a different approach here. We do see at many manufacturers, retails and other organizations, old version such as XP Service Pack 2 and above or Windows 2003 Service Pack 2 and above. Of course, we need to support all the, the six flavors of Linux and Unix and the latest macOS environments as well. This is a must. We need to create a very slim and light agent our agent is between 10 to 12 megabytes, that is all. It is at first injected to the memory in parallel downloaded to the disk. We are very slim and light on CPU usage, between one to 1.4 CPU usage on a regular stage and the ability to limit up to 5% on a correlation or event. After that, I would like to take a couple of minutes just showing you the demo of the platform and cover a little bit the capabilities that both Dasha touched based on, and Signet provides as well for some points that we covered on CMMC. So I hope everyone can see the radar screen that I'm sharing here, which is Signet's main dashboard. And you can easily see that the radar indicates the four fundamental pillars of coverage that we mentioned before, the files, the user, the host, and the network. All the alerts 
on your organization will be centralized over here and everything is clickable. You can click and automatically be diverted to the forensic view of that event. You can see each alert by the pillar and understand what type of event it is. And in the middle, you can see even a score. Our score mechanism defines the type and the severity level. And we even made life easier by providing five scores and five colors. For example, a 1000 score colored in red will refer to a critical severity alert or 700 in yellow will be for high severity. You'll have a 500 in purple and 300 severity on a blue, uh, colored in blue and in green 100 for an informative. You can see all your alerts in real time summarized on the top left hand side and easily have the ability to look which of my host had an alert, files, users, or network, and even review alerts by day, week, and month. In addition to that, we provide a main dashboard of alerts that are in order from the latest to the recent when they appear on your network. You'll see each alert providing much more details and a lot of useful capabilities operational-wise. First of all, having the device name over here, the alerts name, which type is it? It's a file, host, network, user, et cetera. Having the ability to filter severity level if your team is very busy, looking at host name, referring back on dates and times on all alerts. Having the ability to have a drill down combo with much more details from the main dashboard of operation, still maintaining your eyes on all your alerts in real time that will provide much more details. Some of them I'll take a minute to cover over here. Some of course, feel free to reach out for much deeper demo to the cell science test team. The ability from each alert, click on an action button and from that specific alert, whitelist, engage with SOC services, sending to sandboxing, performing remediation actions manually or automatically, or even the ability to tailor made a specific playbook according to your needs to that specific event. And last but not least, the incident view, which of course takes you to a different dashboard, but provides a full automation, forensics capabilities and correlation of an event. I'll touch base on that as we move forward. I'll show just uh, an, uh, one alert in this demo, but before covering that, one of the main values that even if you chose not to go in fully automation is the ability of Signet, if it's manual configured, to have a basic order remediation built in for critical and high severity alerts. Can be disabling a user, blocking a traffic, killing a process, isolating a host and many more, which is mainly Signet's way to address fast operating ransomwares and advanced malwares. I believe it's a better being safe than sorry structure, much preferred. And I wanna take just one example of an alert over here, showing you exactly what you can see and learn. When you click on each alert, first of all, you'll see that it's a file alert. You'll have the user's details, the host, even which type of uh, executable is running and clicking on the three arrows opens a pop-up window. And one of the biggest values is the wording correlation and description of the event. In this demo environment, you can easily see this was, there was a detection engine running a malicious binary. They had an infected file. The file was dumped to the disk and many more details below the host name, its IP, OS version, sign up endpoint version and configuration, the exact date and time when we detected this event, which layer was the first layer of engines detected it, where exactly this file exists on your network even providing shortcut to the past. And of course, value of automation that the system will automatically generate a hash, SHA or signature. So from now onwards, this will be already signatured added to the database. And of course, the process tree of this executable on the right hand side. Another very nice thing I wanted to share over here, we talked about some actions you can perform and I mentioned remediation actions. Remediation actions can be done manually or automatically, can be for a file, for user, for a host, many of them over here. The ability to shut down, restart, disable a link, run a command, pull a file, run a script, delete or disable a service, and many, many more, or even automatic ones. And I mentioned in some of the slides that it's very important to tailor made a playbook. If you have any demand or need for a tailor made playbook, with Signet, you can easily go to the settings, remediation tabs, and playbook. And for example, I mentioned ransomware. You can see that ransomware playbook can be run in sequential or parallel. 
and the built-in playbook by us will be a quarantine isolate, showing isolated status and disable a user. Sometimes maybe you'll have the need to kill the process, to block the RDP, to uh, delete the file's credential, and even after that, power off the host. And you want to kill the process at the second stage of the playbook, you just drag and drop and save. Very useful, very efficient. One more thing, very important, talked about the automation and the incident view. In my personal opinion, a game changer in the industry. And since we have four minutes left here. <coughs> Amy, I think your dog is making some issues. On him. I'll show, uh, I'll explain a little bit about the incident view over here and exactly what you're seeing. It'll take a minute. This is a very important and very valuable feature. So what we're seeing in an incident view at the top is the descriptions, the impact, root cause, remediation, what well, further action needed in a summary and below the autonomous responder. In this demo environment, what we did is created a scheduled task and you can easily see that it's a living off the line binary execution running. So when Sinet detected that the autonomous responder will automatically come in place with three automatic steps. In blue will be the investigation steps, in red will be the findings, and green the remediation. For example, automatically you can see that Sinet will check if this malware executed any additional file. The system automatically notifies me that no malicious file was executed, and then automatically moves to check if this malicious activity established any type of network connection. Nothing happened over here. So of course, we're gonna check if this malware executed any type of message. And in this scenario, it did, it created a scheduled task. Once that is detected, automation comes in place for searching the same task on all additional hosts on your environment. On-prem, cloud, data center, it's the same. And we even see, can easily see that we did find them on additional four hosts. In order to define which one of them, you just click on it to see the exact host where the scheduled task was uh, detected on. So the findings are very simple. The root cause is that it created a scheduled task. Most important is remediation. It automatically will come in place. Senate will automatically delete the scheduled task from the host. But in this scenario, there was an impact to four additional hosts. We will automatically delete from all those additional hosts. And of course, always end up showing you the first infected host as part of a flow of an attack. In this case, VMware 01. So not only we provide great correlation capabilities and visibility and understanding of flow of the attack and all the artifacts are below, the most valuable thing is the automation. The entire process I just described took Sinet 58 seconds, fully automated time to resolution. And of course you have the ability to look at all the incident artifacts, click on each and every one and have more details or even look at the forensics page and see Sorry for that. And of course, look at the forensics page and see how an event looks like. Even if you double click on each page, you'll see much more details. For example, the time flying, timeline at the top providing you from the moment it detected until now the entire flow, all clickable by dates and time, looking at the host file, user, segment, part of the event. For example, in this demo, as I mentioned before, this host was compromised. You'll see all the files on the left-hand side connected to it, users, networks, and of course, to understand exactly how we defined it or on the right-hand side, all the artifacts from all our engines in real time, defining type, severity level, attaching a score, and of course, according to that score and type of event, the auto playbook comes in place and much more details over here and reports capabilities. But of course, we don't have the time to cover all of them and uh, would be more than happy if you can feel free to reach out to the uh, stealth ISIS team. We'll be more than happy to provide much more deeper, uh, <clears throat> deeper session and demo for you and provide much more details. It's only a glimpse. I didn't even cover 10% of what the capabilities are built in, but everything is automated and very easy uh to understand thank you roy um that was that was impressive and i, I think for people to grasp the the concepts of of that uh software it really is uh pieces of an enterprise class soar tool 
and endpoints all merged into one. Uh, incredible value, incredible capability and customization and uh, the amount of forensics and details and playbooks that you can launch are, are uh, endless. So appreciate that demo. At this time, I think we wanna engage in answering some questions. If you have any questions, uh, we have some ones that people have sent in beforehand, but also in your chat window below, um, you can post any questions and, and we can take this time to answer them. Could I ask the very first question? Absolutely, Robert. So how does this scale? How many endpoints could you build into one system and what's the time to deploy? It's a great question. So there's many methods of deployment that we support and I didn't have the time to cover that. Can be by our tools, MSI, GPO, uh, group policy, CCSN, and even we created a, a, our own dispatcher. So from our records with our, dispa our dispatcher, which basically operates like a worm, has the ability to auto detect, discover, and auto deploy in the network. We're record now that around over 5,000 endpoints in an hour. Uh, to be realistic, usually an organization of 3,000, 4,000 endpoints, half a day with fine tuning is more than enough. It's even, I took space on time here to a full deployment of the first stage, yes, of course. That's awesome. And that's without, by the way, having to stand up your own SOC, um, which is very expensive and can take months. So I just wanted to make that point. Thank you. I, back to the Q&A. Thank you. Um, waiting for questions in the chat below, but it, some that people sent in, one of them was, I already have an, a, a next generation AV or EDR solution. Would SignNet replace these or work with them? So first of all, of course, we can replace and we do exist with uh, third parties as well. You have the ability, very simple on a check marks from the setting. We coexist with uh, EDRs or next gen AV. Most of the clients that we have today, since they have those capabilities, prefer, first of all, not to have two agents on a device CPU wise. Uh, and um, the ability of course of performance. And in addition, sometimes double the amount of noise, false positive or alerts getting from the same solutions. Some capabilities are the same, some we have much more advanced. So of course uh, they'll get much more alerts. Usually the purpose of the system is automation to reduce those uh, noises and really focus on real alerts and what is going on and the correlation of them. Thank you, Roy. Um, we have one from the chat that says, how do you compare to Bitdefender Gravity Zone? That is a great question, Derek. Thanks for that. So both great vendors and exactly as I covered in the beginnings are great EDR vendors. We're not an EDR, we're an XDR meaning having, first of all, the capabilities, and this is one of the values we provide, and of course, the sales team, the 24-7 MDR. Uh, for example, deceptions that they do not clean. Um, um, and uh, the ability to have entity behavior analysis, not only user behavior analysis. If it's not clear, I'll take a minute on that. Today, most advanced uh, uh, um, attacks are entity behavior, not only user. Everyone here knows that user can be out of the ordinary activities, accessing on a Sunday morning or a gale location, I don't know, China that is not part of your policy or user accessing resource application that is not privileged or allowed to do so. Entity is those DLLs, PowerShells, which everyone I believe you know, PowerShell can be legitimate good operation or a bad one. And the best way to define and understand is understanding who, what, when, where, and how. So those AI and UBA capabilities enable us to do so. Uh, thank you, Roy. We have a question from the chat that says, um, how can you ensure CMMC compliance in an air-gapped environment? Uh, I think that best goes to Dasha. Yeah. Dasha, you're, you're on muted. mute, Dasha. There we go. Noticed, yeah. <laughs> so, um, air-gapped environment. Um, the signet solution or incident response in general or monitoring works um, with having the people there and being able to receive the threat intelligence from external, which means also be having the dashboard, um, somebody monitoring it. Um, right now, the solutions are in the cloud in the US. Uh, they are, so even if you have an air gap, 
it does not matter where it is as long as the endpoint is connected to the cloud and has the agent running we will be able to monitor to respond to it to do anything with it um the only the only uh caveat we have there if a device is not connected to the internet you still get the protection uh sign that the agent is still monitoring everything it is protecting but you will not get get the latest update until you're connected to the infrastructure or to the internet and you will not be able or we from a SOC perspective will not be able to see the reports or the alerts as they come in but the protection you will still get so it's basically it works yeah. the same way as a as an antivirus if you're if you stick something in into the device and it's not connected to the internet it will protect it and if i may add to that um one of the biggest values here with our this amazing partnership is uh that sales provides that as a managed services as well one of our biggest partners they have the ability for you uh on not only deploy that on your organization on-prem today we're facing unfortunately through covid uh a new reality that the perimeter expands and basically we're working from home um our agent in order to connect to uh, the stealth uh, uh, management console needs https outbound connectivity that is all not a vpn or direct connectivity to your network and i believe most people do have https outbound on their uh, home internet therefore everything can be uh, uh, um, automatically um, reported to uh, the uh, stealth main management of our platform. And of course they have the team and expertise to protect and even an end user. And, and that was really, um, I mean, we've been partnered for a couple of years now, and especially as COVID, we've seen that a lot with especially smaller businesses where they decided to send their employees home and everybody was working from somewhere, um, call it home or, wherever they were, uh, the good thing is this is not tied to an infrastructure. So anywhere, wherever you have your device, wherever you work from, even if you travel, hopefully after all this is over, you still will be protected. It still be managed centrally, will still be monitoring 24 seven. It just, wherever you are, it works. And that's one of the key features and key advantages of being able to use this. Thanks, Tasha. Another and question. I want to add even to that, David, sorry, one of the expertise of Dasha and even us uh, and the, the Stealth Access uh, team, they have various of uh, deployment with us that are clients that are on-prem, SaaS, cloud, virtual private cloud, or even hybrid topologies, combining a couple of those. Yep. So, of course, yep. the uh, Stealth Access team is uh, uh, our premier uh, partner on that aspect. So, uh, so, there's many examples. You can feel free to reach out if you're... Uh, combined on a couple of environments today, not only on Framework Data Center, fully supported by the sales as well. Thank you, Roy. Um, another question, I'll take this one, because there's a couple questions that are kind of the same. Uh, does it, an overview of which area CMMC NIST your services cover? Does your service provide policies and procedures? And another one, how does this solution get an organization in terms of prospective certification? Um, there is not one piece of solute, uh, you know, one technology that's going to cover everything in CMMC. It's, it's very much a building blocks. Although this does cover a lot when you're talking monitoring endpoint um, incident response and securing your network. Um, it covers a lot of different areas. And, and at, you know, if you engage with Stealth, we can definitely put together charts to show you how Cynet's uh, technology covers the various areas within uh, CMMC. Um, but there are other areas, it does not cover policies and procedures, um, but that is something we can engage with you uh, um, at Stealth Group to help you uh, in that, um, in your writings and in templates and in what you need to do from, from a policies perspective and how you need to sustain that ongoing. If I can add to it, I, uh, I think James, that was you asking it or anyone who is interested here, we have a um, we have an overview of the CMMC requirements of what um, Cynet their solution with our SOC as a service and managed response include, and we also have the full scope of uh, what services we all combined provide for CMMC in which particular areas we cover, and I think uh, we're close to like 50 or 60 different points 
I don't know exact number, but uh, happy to share that with whoever is interested. Uh, we will be sharing the video later on, so we'll, you'll get the link and please reach out to us if you want to see that document, what areas we, we cover here for CMMC. Dasha, we have a question here. Does CMMC ML1 require documentation? Um, no. Uh, for level one, you do not require documentation as in practices, procedures, uh, but you do require to show that you practice those things. So password changes, patching, all those, you have to show that you have it in place. 17 areas, it's not straightforward. The documentation come into place in, uh, for level two. Thank you. Um, where do we deliver the 24 seven SOC and incident response from? So we have, um, we have multiple SOCs, but uh, for the US, for our clients in the US, we deliver it out of the US. Um, everything that is cloud-based is hosted um, on the US in, uh, in the US da uh, data centers like AWS. So we do it from here. For our uh, European customers, complete separate infrastructure, complete separate um, delivery team, as well as um, Middle East and, um, and Australia, we have different teams. So we make sure that we do not, we keep the data privacy in place that we only deliver out of those um, areas that the clients are, especially for CMMC. Um, you, have to, you have to make sure that um, the data privacy and the CMMC requirements are guaranteed. Uh, we also make sure that, especially when it comes to um, GDPR purposes, it is, um, we, we only here in this case, we're only sending metadata across. So nothing really particular, but some countries like Germany, they are very picky about IP addresses being considered PII and people from the US, for example, cannot touch those. So we have different scenarios, but for US clients, we deliver out of the US. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple minutes left. So I'll, I'll take one more in here. It says, how does the platform differ from a source solution? I'm gonna address a little bit, Roy, and then I'll let you, because I came from this world before Stealth and, and uh, sold into Fortune 100 large socks. So um, a true SOAR platform is, is usually vendor agnostic. It's integrating with a SIM like Splunk, like QRadar, like uh, Logarithm, um, and you're bringing those alerts into a SOAR platform to manage those. And from there, the SOAR really has two key functions. It has uh, the collaboration and management of that incident, uh, documentation, artifacts, and then you have playbooks that are, are, are triggering off of those alerts or those incidents. And usually that integrates your entire cybersecurity tool stack within the SOC to trigger those playbooks and have in a lot of uh, you know level or version two uh, source today have have that forensics capability to drill down into the documentation. Um, this SciNet platform has some of that, but it is only within the alerts that are being generated from um, the sensors that are on the endpoints. It's not taking any, any alerts from a SIM. Roy, would you like to add? First of all, that is correct. We do collect as an agent, every file activity, process activity, user activity, network activity, network traffic. At the moment, we don't collect from third parties as David mentioned, can be proxies, email gateways, firewalls, and many more solutions. <laughs> so we do have those SOAR capabilities. And in most cases, we see that if it's a large enterprise organization, easily the integration with us, with, a four, with a, an existing SOAR, is an amazing value. Uh, and if it's a small, medium organization, I would say 8,000 endpoints, 10,000 endpoints and below, some of those capabilities we provide is way much more enough on that cover. All depends on each client's needs. Uh, David and other team members of uh, Sales Group are expert on that. Feel free uh, to share your own use case with them to see that if that would be uh, enough to your needs or maybe the building we provide are good. Uh, coverage on your end. All right, I want to be cognizant of the time right now. We're at the top of the hour. I want to thank everybody for today. I'm going to let Dasha have um, the last words. Dasha. Thank you so much. I just want uh, to the question um, that 
you somebody asked previously, I want to give a quick. Um, let me see. Am I sharing something? I right think now? it was James that asked that. Yeah, James. you were sharing it. We did see it. Now it went away. Yeah, let me do that again. So I just want to quickly share. So here are the areas that we've put together that between um, Synet and Stealth Group that we share from CMMC. Um, it's quite uh, quite extensive. Um, only this is the text for the last version, but everything from AC uh, through all the way SI with the, we cover a lot of different areas. So as I said, feel free to reach out. You can have this, the slide deck will also be available and um, we can, you know, we can elaborate in more details on, the, on those particular areas with you. All right, well, thank you. Thank you everybody for participating today. Um, if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, here at Stealth or, or at Synet, and uh, we'll work together to help you in, in whatever concerns and, and challenges that you have. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so Thank much. You and of course, stay safe. Yes. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.